Hello. <laughs> I'm very happy to be here today. I'm Katri. I'm a cognitive neuroscientist. I'm super excited to be here because I get to speak about science. And I get to speak about my favorite subject, what I believe to be the most important human skill in the digital age, empathy. I'm going to speak about what empathy means, what it is, and a little bit about how it is studied in the field of neuroscience. I'm going to speak about why I believe that empathy is so important, why it's always been important for human beings, why it's important now, and why I believe that its importance will only increase in the future. And last, because empathy is so important, I'm going to speak about what it requires. What does the science tell us? What kinds of things increase empathy? What kinds of things decrease empathy? Off to the first topic, what is empathy? In short, empathy is all the skills that we have that allow us to understand each other. It's all the mechanisms that allow us to share our thoughts and share our feelings. In the field of neuroscience, empathy is typically divided into three separate skills that are supported by different brain mechanisms. We speak about empathy on the level of thoughts, understanding what another person is thinking, putting yourself in another person's shoes or in another person's brain. We speak about empathy on the level of feelings, feeling what another person is feeling, feeling another person's emotions as they were your own, and empathy on the level of actions, and that is basically what you do based on this information. When you, if you have the ability to put yourself in another person's shoes, and feel what they are feeling, do you do something about it? Do you try to help? So, these three things are supported by different brain mechanisms. And empathy on the level of thoughts happens because we have brain mechanisms that make us all mentalists. There is a network in the brain, it's called the mentalizing network, that is active when we think about our own thoughts, for example, our memories, when we think ahead and think about the future or plan the future, as well as when we think about the thoughts of others. <coughs> On the level of feelings, empathy happens because we have brain mechanisms that make emotions very contagious. It's very easy to catch the emotions of another person. For example, when you show a face, a happy face, to a, to a human being, quite often, automatically, the muscles that control the smile on the face become active. So it's very automatic, often unconscious. This is true also for negative feelings. And according to several studies, for example, the experience of pain may be very contagious. And there are studies that show that the same brain areas are active when you yourself get hurt as when you see your friend getting hurt. So there are situations where your pain is the same as my pain, when our brains don't separate, our, don't create um, a division between you and I. And I think that's a very beautiful finding in the field of science. Third, empathy on the level of actions happens because we have brain mechanisms that make helping others very rewarding. People like helping others, people enjoy sharing. For example, there was a study where people were asked to play a game inside a brain scanner, and they were rewarded for playing the game. According to the results of the brain scan, however, the areas that are responsible for experiencing pleasure and reward were a lot more active when a friend was rewarded too. So this is the neural basis of empathy. It's all these mechanisms we have that allow us to put ourselves in another person's shoes, feel what other people are feeling. Now to the so what part. Well, so what? OK, there is this thing called empathy. It's based on these brain mechanisms. Why is it important? Why should we care? Well, I feel it is, it's a highly important skill. I feel it's been important since the dawn of man, it's been important since prehistoric times. It's a very important skill at this very moment. And in the future, the importance of empathy will only increase. First, let's look at the history. Um, there are some researchers that propose that empathy is actually one of the main reasons that human beings have survived. 
So let's take a trip back in history. Let's go to the prehistoric times, a time when people were living among big beasts like lions and bears. <laughs> so there is no way people are a lot weaker, smaller, and, and uh, slower than bears and lions. There's no way we could take on a lion on our own. We could do it by coming together. So the theory is that because we have empathy skills, this allows us to collaborate, to cooperate. And because we cooperate, that is how we managed to survive in an age when we were living among these terrible beasts. So how about now? We're not fighting lions in the street now. We have other kinds of challenges. But as I suggest that empathy is still highly important because it's together how people achieve the greatest things. It's together how we solve the biggest problems. Just as no man alone could take on a lion, no man alone could put a, a, a rover on Mars. It requires collaboration. If we want to achieve big things, we need to collaborate. One mind is not enough. Collective intelligence is our best problem-solving tool, and empathy is the route to this. Well, how about the future? I already told you that I think that empathy, the importance of empathy, will only increase in the future. Why is that? Well, one, one um, example comes from the field of work, from the world of work. We've all heard that work is changing. People are a little worried because robots are coming to work and they're going to take our jobs. <laughs> Actually, this isn't true. Sadly, work won't decrease, but the types of tasks that humans focus on will change. So what does it mean that robots are coming to work? Well, it means that humans will focus on work in which the robot sucks. <laughs> so we'll do the things that the robot cannot do. Well, what kinds of skills does this type of work require? Well, it's not the skills that are typically connected to intelligence, like whether you're really quick with your thinking, whether you remember all the dates or things like that. It's skills such as these, learning, creativity, flexible thinking, but most importantly, empathy. Empathy is a skill where we can take on the robot. <laughs> it's a skill that the robots do not have. And in summary, this means that empathy will be the most important future work skill. Actually, I think it's the most important work skill already now. So there, empathy has always been super important. It's important now, and it'll be only more important in the future. So if it is this, this mighty important thing, what does it require? Is there something that science and, and experience could tell us about empathy? How to increase it, how to decrease it? First, let's look at the enemies of empathy. What makes empathy go away? One thing that is definitely an empathy killer is fear. Fear towards the unknown, and especially fear towards difference. Fear towards difference leads to us versus them thinking. It leads to in-group, out-group thinking. And when we draw this line between ourselves and other people, it means that the mechanisms of empathy turn off. The feelings of the other person aren't contagious anymore. We don't feel their pain. We don't put ourselves in their shoes. Another thing that kind of kills empathy is lack of emotions. Sometimes the importance of emotions is not understood. We like to think of ourselves as rational, logical thinkers. But actually, emotions carry within them highly significant information. If we don't get this information about the emotions of others, it's very difficult to truly understand each other, to truly connect. And this is a problem that is very particular to the digital age, because for some reason, Digital systems are not designed to take human emotions into consideration. The internet is not designed to permit rich expression of emotions. Actually, the mechanisms, the tools we have for expressing our emotions on the internet are very, very poor in quality. And nothing compared to the information that is traveling between us right now. What does this lead to? Well, this leads to lack of empathy. 
There is no emotion contagion. Only the facts, only the message, the, the facts of the message get through, not the emotions. This means it becomes very easy to be mean online when you don't feel the pain of the person reading your message. It means it, we can actually become very cruel online when we don't feel what the reaction that our message is causing. Uh, even though this phenomenon takes place online, the consequences are felt in real life. So there could be a problem, and that is why we should be interested in any way we can increase empathy, online and in real life. So now to the, the good news. There are ways to increase empathy. One of them, a suggestion from a neuroscientist, is let's try transcranial magnetic stimulation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In the 20s, it looked something like this. <laughs> Luckily, technology has advanced, and currently the TMS device looks something like this. So the aim of this device is, with the help of a strong magnetic field, to stimulate the brain and cause um, activity in the brain. And believe it or not, stimulating the brain with a large magnet does cause empathy. <laughs> it makes us more pro-social, and it uh, increases emotion contagion. So there, problem solved. You just zap your brain and become more empathetic, right? <laughs> Uh, luckily, I also have a, another solution, another suggestion you might want to try, and that is become an explorer of the world. Become an explorer of the world. There are as many realities in this world as there are people. There are 7.4 billion different realities for you to go out and explore. And through this exploration, decrease your fear of the unknown decrease your fear of difference. This doesn't mean that you have to travel, even though that's an excellent option. <laughs> you could also read a book. Reading is one, uh, one very efficient way to get to know new worlds, get to know different realities from your own. And according to research, reading fiction does increase empathy skills. It increases our skills of understanding others' feelings as well as others' thoughts. Another suggestion, in addition to transcranial magnetic stimulation, might be finding ways to get on the same wavelength with others. One good way to do this is through music. There's an interesting study showing that when, when um, scientists made strangers play rock band before they went in and did a task, there was more emotion contagion. So it's true what they say about breaking the ice, and music might be one excellent way to do that. But what would it be about music that kind of turns on the empathy mechanisms in the brain? It might be the rhythm, the rhythm that puts us on the same wavelength. There's a study, for example, showing that just clapping in rhythm with another person increases the liking between them. Or Rocking in a rocking chair at the same speed in synchrony increases cooperative ability as well as um, empathy. So there are these little tweaks we could do, these little things that um, you don't need a common language for that might kind of turn on the empathetic parts of your brain. So in summary, empathy is all the skills we have that we need to understand each other, share our thoughts, share our feelings and act on this understanding, cooperate. It's a highly important skill for the human race. It's been a survival skill in the age of lions and grizzly bears. Right now, it, it's the, our most potent problem-solving tool. And in the future, we'll need it even more. Um, fear is one thing that kills empathy. It, gets, it creates a wall between people. Exploring the world might decrease this fear and increase your empathy, as well as trying to find the same wavelength with people, even if you don't share a common culture or share a common language. Altogether, I think that being empathetic is one of the bravest things that a human being in this world can do. Exploring the realities of other people, opening up your mind to the realities of other people, opening up your heart to the feelings of other people, allowing yourself to be touched, and allowing yourself to be moved.
It requires courage. That was my story today. On behalf of my team working to create a more empathic internet, thank you.